I send you my number from there. Okay, thank you so much, little brother, man. I love you, man, and I really appreciate every time you chime in because you're always giving us something to be able to, uh, you know, come off of. Amen. Thank you, brother. Bless you. No problem. No problem. Thank you, um, brother Hedge. You know, you once told me that you had to see somebody on your shoulder so they can see further than you. And so that's what I try to do. Every day, Peace and man. Blessing. Every day. Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. We have the Honorable Nobra Amir Ali um, calling in from the United in Peace um, Incorporation. Um, brother, brother Nobra Amir Ali, are you on the are you on the, are you on the line now? Is his phone off of mute? Yes, sir. I will continue, Brother Harris, to stuff no sooner until we get those technical, the technical difficulties worked out. So oh, long. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, do we have anybody else that would like to come in and share at this time based on what you heard today? If you have any comments, questions, concerns, or if you would just like to generally comment based on where you're at today and what you want to strive to begin to uh, evolve into on a political platform. Peace and blessings. Is there anything you have to do with say peace and blessings? You are off, um, you are off the host queue. We have a six seven eight caller. Oh. Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings, Peace and family. Um, you know how y'all brothers doing, man? How y'all the family doing? Um, you know, when you talk about the political platform, man, you know, that's what we striving for now. You know what I mean? You know, I was on uh, Facebook and I seen with a brother, uh, Noble, you know what I mean? I leave it like, you know, about the unity, the unity and the political politics can work together. You feel what I'm saying? That's the same thing that's going on with the prison officials and the, and the inmates. You know what I'm saying? Showing them how, you know, we can work with them as well as they can work with us to make it a step and a better environment for all of us. You know what I mean? So it's like, when you're talking about unity, that's unity amongst the people. You know what I mean? We know that's what a, that's what a power is. Really, that's what a power amongst the people. So it's a must that the people must unite. Unity is a big thing with the people. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, taking our wants and our needs and our demands, to the government, to the politics, helping, you know, showing them that we can all be looking at the same picture and we all trying to get to the same place. We're just looking at it from different angles. You know what I'm saying? So we need to step over here and let us and see it from our angle and see it from our point of perspective when we step on their side because it's a struggle between the people. It's a struggle between the people and the, and the politics because it's a misunderstanding. You see what I'm saying? I read somewhere where they say that the understanding is the best part of life. You know what I mean? We ain't got to understand it with each other and with the government, with the political, you know what I mean? And then another thing is about pushing and voting. Like, you got these young kids that's in school, that's in college, you know what I mean? And they, they, they will make brutal political figures that's for the people, you know what I mean? The standards is fight for the laws. And then we need to start putting them in jail, promoting them and helping them out and backing them economically. That would be our political background. We could be their political friend, like their political insight, you know what I mean? That's why I want to say peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. Brother, I want to ask you a question. Are you alive with us? Yes, sir. Uh, you know, this brother Harris, man, calling, you know, um, calling upon you to ask you, you know, what would it take in your environment in order for you to be able to unite uh, a two man committee from the white community, the Hispanic community? elder black community as well as the youth black community. What would it take for you to get the people together? What do you offer in common that will bring you to the table together in your right now? Um, it's a blessing. You know, we just had a meeting, you know what I mean, on our compound about that, and it's everything, everybody wants peace. Saying what is a, like a, a strong popularity command that's universal, like universal law or the laws of nature, all this is universal. So I look at it like, you know, speaking calmly, you know what I mean? We all want peace. 
if it all comes from, everybody just want to sit back and live comfortable. Don't nobody want to keep looking over their shoulders, thinking about unnecessary wars and nonsense that could be avoided. And it all go back to the understanding. He and everybody out. Listen to everybody demand. And what we are agreeing upon, and everything is about voting. Voting just don't mean that, you know, technically speaking, with the government, vote can be in a community. Vote can be amongst those people. And not in being that strong voice. That, that you, and you got to be aware. First, you got to be spiritually in tune. <laughs> As you know, because we don't understand that the flesh is weak, but the spirit is willing. You know what I'm saying? So first and foremost, you need to understand their culture. I want they know it because at the end of the day, we're dealing with people. We're not dealing with colors. We're not dealing with races. We're not dealing with religion. We're dealing with people. We're dealing with God's created people. We're dealing with God's most beautiful and highest source of intelligence. We're not dealing with everything else. So automatically, we got to overlook that I'm dealing with mankind. I'm dealing with a brother of the struggle. You know what I'm saying? A sister in these struggles to make our community better where we can live amongst this land. So I think that you got to get them incentive, you know, like you say, get them two committees, get them two, you know, them two members from each organization, and you, you take them to vision. You know what I mean? You know, I once read that about an honorable brother that stated that, you know, a builder without vision cannot lead to the liberation. So you got to show them how it's better for everybody, not just the blacks, not just the whites, not just the Hispanics. It's better for everybody. For everybody on this land, you know what I'm saying, the first thing we must establish is community. Because you see now you don't see community in a lot of places no more. You don't see them behind the prison walls. You don't see them behind, you know, you don't see them in the ghettos. You don't see them in the hoods. You know, you don't see them in the places that really need community. And that's another thing you teach about the community, man. You know, you don't take, okay, me being a 5% of, now that I ain't going to take 5% of that there because you got Catholics out here. You got Islam out here. You got these brothers out here. You know what I'm saying? So when you say, I'm not going to say Allah, I'm going to say God, because it's universal. You know what I'm saying? You say God, it takes away any titles. You know what I mean? Because we're also dealing with, you know, the ignorance of people that we striving to overcome. It's one of our struggles, overcome the, the ignorance of Allah's created people. So I look at it, you call them together, and you're sticking to that common ground where you're showing them where you is. If you embrace this vision and embrace this movement, how it's better for everybody? My community, your community, their community, and our community as a universal whole. Now, I mean, seeing that it's universal and not just for one group of people. Thank you so much, good brother. And uh, <clears throat> for anybody that don't know, you know, the reason why we're asking this is because this brother just showed us how we begin to bring together a political move within our environment. That's politics. You understand me? The only thing different from what that brother just shared and what we're talking about in Washington, D.C., is the fact of the numbers. They multiply. That's it. That's all, family. But these people have found ways to tap into what it is that is a common thread among all people, and that's the spiritual value of the human being. One thing that we all have in common is we all have been children, and thus we all love children. Almost 99% of America loves the children because we have been children. But for the grace of God, they'll go out. So when it comes down to people doing something for kids, you can usually get people more involved in than any other time where they won't even do it for elders because you haven't been old and crippled and disabled yet. So you don't use an empathetic shoe when it comes to dealing with elders as you would the, ch the kids. And so one of the things that we want to look to is what type of valuable information we can bring to the table to bring everybody together. And if you feel like you don't want to be a part of another man's or another spiritual group's mission, then build a mission of your own that other people can come to. Dr. King even said it, if you're, you're able to do better than, than what I've done, then do it so we can follow you. But by any means necessary, let's provoke change. Don't use excuses. We must find that key element that brings us together in order to position us for success. This is not success, family. We have a man by the name of Hal Ruskin who has lost his son up in Chicago 
a community activist who used to be in the streets. He lost a nephew earlier this year, and now he's lost his son to this senseless gun violence. Who cares? Who cares? We should care. I should care. Because but for the grace of God, that could have been my son, not of a fact that was my son. That was my child. Peace Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings, family. Peace and blessings. I'd like to introduce the executive director of United and Peace Incorporated, the Honorable Nora Amir Ali. Brother Nora Amir Ali. All hail the All hail the rising sun, the coming of the day of righteousness the coming of the day of universal peace, perpetual peace, and everlasting peace. In the name of the one God of peace, in the name of the one God of unity, in the name of the one God of mercy, we rise, we stand, we ascend. We rise far above all the carnal plane of materialistic cares. We rise and we stand far above the carnal plane of materialistic allurements. We rise, we stand. We free ourselves from the bondage of materialistic slavery. We rise and we stand. We ascend far above all dust, lust, must, and finite fuss. We give praise to the most high God of creation, the supreme grand architect of the universe and the father of the ten principles that binds us to unity the father of love, the causeless cause, the rootless root, from which all things have been manifested to the sons and daughters of mankind. The father of life, precious life, loyalty, knowledge, wisdom, understanding, truth, peace, freedom. And when those nine principles as the nine months of birth, the trimester of everlasting life, when those nine principles are violated, then justice, the spirit of justice, must manifest and take its course. We give honor to the ancestors and the ancient and divine creed of our people, the one people, unified to do his will and his bidding. We give honor to the founders, the founder of United and Peace Incorporated, the Honorable Larry Hoover, and the long and everlasting bloodline through which he came, stretching back from the Honorable Nat Turner, Harriet Tubman, Ida B. Wells, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, W.E.B. Du Bois. The Holy and Divine Prophet Noble Ju Ali, the Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey, stretching on down the line of those who have come forth for a certain purpose to sacrifice their life in the name of peace, in the name of freedom, and in the name of unity. We give honor to all the past masters, the present masters of United and Peace Incorporated. We give honor to the Supreme Grand Council of Elders and the National Grand Body of Urban Translators. We give honor to the mission statement of United and Peace Incorporated in the name of the uplifting of fallen humanity. We give honor to its seal of peace and unity. And we give honor to its supreme ruler on earth, the charter, the embodiment of the laws and policies 
of United in Peace Incorporated. We give honor to the United States flag, the manifestation of that blood-stained stars and stripes of our ancestors hanging from the tree of slavery with the welts and stripes whose blood, sweat, and tears built and saved our country in which we live. We give honor where honor is due. We give honor to the membership, the national membership, the local membership. We give honor to the supporters of the peace initiative. And we give honor to the well wishers. We give honor where honor is due. We give honor to the POPs movement and to the mission statement of the POPs movement. To heal the sick and the shut in. Those who are incarcerated in the bowels of the belly of the beast, awaiting their return to the bounds of society, to become a positive and productive member of society, and to comfort those who are touching down in the bounds of society, to prepare them for the world, and to reduce the dreadful level that plagues us, that level of recidivism, We give honor to all those who are gathered tonight on this line in the name of peace and in the name of bringing the message of peace and salvation to our at-risk children throughout the entire country. We give honor to the law, the universal law of the creator, the law that compels us to love ourselves and to love our fellow brothers and sisters, the self-sacrificial law, the universal law that governs all events. Love is the law, and the law must live. My name is Brother Noble Amir Ali, and it is a pleasure for myself to join you all tonight in the name of service and the name of love. I haven't come to uh, to preach tonight or to deliver a sermon, but I came to look, listen, and learn. Because as I understand, I'm gathered together in the assembly of thinkers. And it's going to take thought and the development of thought to get the job done. This is not a time for those who doubt the thoughts of the solution to our social ills. It's thought and unified thought that we have all come together tonight to honor in harmony and peace. So let me express my supreme gratitude and my humble thanks to you all for working on the thought in the workshop of the mind, great mind. Tonight is not an hour for mediocre minds or small minds. But tonight is a night for great minds to work on the problem of our social leaders. I give honor to our brother and moderator, Brother Hess Adden, Brother Anton Jones, your family, your well wishes, and your supporters. And with that, brother, I'm going to yield back my time to the floor and humbly sit and listen to the continuation of tonight's agenda. But I'm totally at your service, and I'm at every brother and sister who has gathered on this line. I'm at your service to serve you as a humble servant and to most importantly take into consideration the multitude, the multifaceted diamond of solutions that we have to offer our children for the sake of their salvation together in unity. No big eyes and no little use. 
Tonight is the hour of the week. So with that, I bid you peace and love, and I yield back my time to the floor. Peace and blessings, my beloved. It is an honor for you to to stop in and grace us with your presence, knowing how much that you are going through and how many things that you have on your shoulders. But the most high, to God be the glory. Brother Hess, my beloved, can you come in? Peace and blessings, peace and blessings. You know, we do continue to always, you know, honor the time of our senior fellows who are willing to stand on the front line, you know, girded in truth with the courage to be able to uplift those about them and not worry about what inflicts them. You know, that takes a strong man. And with that being said, Brother Noble Amir Ali, if you would, before you yield the mic and before you um, descend back, I would ask that you please enlighten us, if you would. What is it that people can do to begin to instill within themselves a sense of servitude? What does it require in order for one to fulfill the desire to uphold this bloodstained banner and to carry out a method that will be in service for the family, if you would, my humble brother. Well, peace and blessings again, uh, dear brother, I, and I certainly appreciate the, uh, uh, the acknowledgments. Uh, again, I'm a humble child. I just got I'm, I'm an infinitesimal speck on the wheel <laughs> of time. <laughs> just came to visit and, and and to give my humble uh experience on what I've seen in the past and what I see now and uh what what flows through all of us. Uh you spoke about servitude and 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 I just love that word uh because the word becomes a way of life. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And the word was God, and the word is still God. So one of the most powerful words that I had I heard in my life was, brother, always be willing to serve. You know, uh, uh, even a smile. If you can't do anything else, when you encounter a solution or when you encounter a problem before the uh, solution, pardon, try to change it. You know, try, try, to, try to effect change through service. And I'm going to give you the power of change in a multidimensional uh, without getting too heavy because it's a lot of us that put our heads way up there in the seventh heaven, but we forget that our feet have to remain planted on earth. So without dealing with too much high science tonight, this is an hour that calls for making the solution so plain that a deaf, dumb, and blind child cannot go wrong. Servitude. When you see something being done wrong to yourself or to your people, try to change it. Change it first with your hands. Get some body action in there. Yeah. And if you can't get no body action in there, then change it with your with your good your your good force of willpower, your good feelings, your good intentions. Amen. And if you can't change it with your intentions and the, the collective unified bodies out there, then try to change it with your tongue. Yeah. And if you can't change it with your tongue, then change it with your heart. Yeah. And that works every time, but you should know that when you change things with your heart or just with your tongue, that's the weakest of faith. Servitude. We have to ask ourselves the question, how much are we willing to serve? That's right. Because serve, service has a symbiotic twin. 
It was born into this world with a Siamese twin that cannot be separated with all the medical or biological technology that man will ever receive from here on out. The symbiotic or the Siamese twin to service is sacrifice. So am I willing to serve? Am I willing to sacrifice? Yes. Now, we don't believe, and I think I, I wrote, I wrote a, a quick article on that, and I heard the brothers yield and the sisters yield their wisdom to this. And, and, and when you leave comments on the pages throughout all of our pages, our unified pages out there on Facebook, the social media, uh, and our, our channels of communication, you really uplift me and you teach me a lot in just your feedback. But the service and the sacrifice I think we had shared a while ago, it doesn't require for us to be foolish and to become uh, kamikaze showboaters, going out there, rushing headlong into self-destruction because we mm. want reputation and fame. So the first form of service and sacrifice is the separation of the desire and passion for reputation and fame. Mm. Now, I served I served passionately, and I, I found that I had accomplished so many things for the movement for the past 25 years, and I accomplished more in silence before I was called to speak on the national scene. When you're moving uphill, because we all stumbling upwards towards perfection as human beings. When you're moving yeah. uphill, it's much easier to push a thing than to pull a thing. And when you're pushing a thing uphill, you got better leverage from behind. It's impossible to push from the front. And if you try to pull a thing uphill from the front, your grip might not be that strong. Yeah. And you're sacrificing the possibility of letting your grip slip. And if your grip slips, whatever you moving uphill and you trying to pull uphill is going to fall and that weight is going to be rolling downhill depending on how much weight it is, we might not be able to recover that which we was trying to pull uphill. But when you push a thing and you're standing behind it with all your weight supporting it, you know what you got to do. Because if you lose your footing, Whatever you're pushing is going to collapse and roll down that hill and take you with it. So that's the humble position, to push something from behind. Service and sacrifice goes hand in hand. And with that, I yield back. Most definitely. Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. You know, it's an honor to be able to experience this opportunity to hear the elaboration of what we speak about when we talk about servitude. And I pray that everybody hear what is resonating from the heart and the mind of our brother, of our servant, to not only this nation, but not only united in peace, but to all mankind. You know, one of the things that he just spoke on that, 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 that must be understood in order to actually be achieved within us is a willingness to sacrifice. We speak about being willing, but who can be willing when the will comes from the mind? Your will is your thinking. So if you will something, that means you think it. And as a man thinketh, so is he. He will be compelled to push on that. And what we're pushing is sacrifice, family. What are you willing to give up in order to see the rest achieved? I don't like to give up my money because I was taught that I need to obtain money in order to achieve success. I don't want to give up on other different valuables because that's something that I must have because people told me I needed it in order to achieve notoriety. 
Amen, but brother. Today, come on, family. Amen. Come on. Well, come on, well, man. Come on in here, brother. What are we come. willing to sacrifice? What are we willing to give up to see our children not have to suffer like we did? That's the primary question. Because, see, we're dealing with something more than just all about me, you see, or all about I. We're dealing with boundless time. This has nothing to do with time and space. We are trying to secure the perpetual success and safety of our children. You know, the uh, there's an old saying that paradise is at the foot of the mother. And when we as men can have a little bit more appreciation for what the foundation of the family structure, the spine of the family structure has to go through, and that's that mother, and watch her raise her children in conjunction and in harmony with us as men. Now, if you're in close proximity of the mother of your children or if you're not in close proximity, you still always, no matter what you're going through, if it's peaceful, if it's not peaceful, in terms of the carnal relationship. Because, see, divine love is divine love, but carnal love is carnal love. Carnal love dies on the vine. But it's divine love that will compel any man to respect the mother of his children and to do all he can, up close and personal or either from a distance, to ensure the safety, security, and the perpetual success of the children. This is how we have to think on a national level. That's right. Preach. If you if you gonna do anything for your country, you have to think from a global level. Okay? If you gonna do anything for the entire globe of humanity, I have to Think about healing the planet like I heal and set my own house in order. The world can't be in order unless if your own house is in order. Everything you do in that house or for your children, whether it's up close and personal as men, or if you're not in that household, if you got children, whatever you do, if you govern from a distance or if you govern up close and personal as men, because, see, the sisters is already together. And if we can breathe on the sisters and guide them back from being a couple of inches away from their original nature, then the men are going to follow. We got the work to do on ourselves as men because our nature has gone astray. We about as far from our original nature as the moon is from the earth. And I say that because the moon and the earth represents your woman. Yeah. But when you start learning how to govern your household, then you can govern your block. Then you can govern your neighborhood because the the, the dynamics are one and the same. Father, mother, child. There's a father, mother, child of your household, father, mother, child of your neighborhood, father, mother, child of your community, your country, and behold the universal father, mother, child of the entire planet. Learn how to work with that family structure, then you'll learn what service and sacrifice is all about. That's right. Okay? And so we can begin to each one teach one, each one reach one. When you get your own child in check and in order, then it's impossible for you to look at another little baby brother or baby sister on that block, man, and not feel compelled to administer the same medicine, the same medication, sometimes tough love, sometimes a little soft and gentle love, to that child, the stranger at your gates that you don't even know nothing about. Because when it was said by Hillary, when she went through her African initiation and said it takes a village to raise a child, we used to say it took the entire Garden of Eden to raise a child. That's how old the solution. That's how old the solution is. So I I don't want to be chatty. I'm not going going to hog the mic. I don't like to do that. I like to listen. 
So I want to hear from some of the other brothers out there. If you you unmute some of the brothers and the sisters, let them teach. Y'all have the solution. You got what it, we done brought you everything it takes to save a nation. Take it and save yourself, and then save the world. Shit, we well, shit. We done been on this mission for the past thirty five years, and that's just the latest adjustment of our evolution. Stretches back a little bit farther than that. We're not gonna get into that right now. The timing is so serious right now that we can no longer contemplate the next minute, the next hour. We can't even contemplate what happened five minutes ago. It's all about not even now, but right now. You have to be in the moment and seize the moment. It's not about carpe diem, seize the day. It sees the now, right now. Now I'm gonna get off this this little milk crate over here. Absolutely, absolutely. Peace and blessings, family. We want to go to the mic. Uh, we ask that 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 as the callers call in and you're willing to come to the mic, you know what is it that we, especially as men. And sisters, too, but especially as men, need to sacrifice in order to be able to achieve a righteous gift among this altar of our family, of our community, as well as our cities. This is what we're talking about. And so let's go to the lines right now and see what we have as far as call of participation in opening up the lines and finding out what are you willing to sacrifice and what have you sacrificed in order to be able to make your request be made known in this established order like the brother just shared, in your house and in your family and in your community? Please just step to the mic by saying peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings. How you doing, okay. Queen? Oh, blessed by the best, my brother. Blessed by the best. This is truly an honor. You know, I want to thank God for, you know, um, I'm a living sacrifice, my brother. You know, when um, I gave myself to God, you know, I did that to become a better person for him and whatever his mission was for me to do and be able to do it guided by him to help my family, to help loved ones who are incarcerated because my heart is big, you know. So when I say that, you know, it's it's all about God. It's not about us, you know what I'm saying? And when you're doing his will, you know, you want to be your best at it. So I studied and I studied hard, you know, and I'm, Truly, really usually humble too, you know what I'm saying. And um, I like to think, you know, of of, of um, how to resolve problems, you know. And um, I just want to say real quick, you know, I, um, when I when I made that decision to become a living sacrifice for God in in the future, wherever He sent me to go, you know, to help. I do my best to, you know, um, I think I think about um, I had, I basically gave up everything in my home and moved to a, to another state where my father was, and that was very hard to do, but I was willing to do it for God because He called me. You see, and um, so it's very important, and I want to just briefly just just say uh, thank you to Brother Noble Amir. You know, my beloved brother, you know, um, he's truly a wonderful brother and a mentor to me. Um, he always gives great encouragement and inspiration and words of wisdom, you know, and I, I thank God for that. You know, it's truly a great example, you know, of of a servant, you know, and there are many men like that, you know, but when it comes to standing out and stepping forth and, and putting into action, you know, that's what it's all about. Um, I think about 
right now with the political aspect of the topic we're discussing tonight, you know, you know, the powers is in numbers. It's in the numbers. If we can come up with, you know, enough numbers to go in there, you know, and address ourselves and our ideas, then, you know, to the Congress, because that's where we need to make change at. You see what I'm saying? Because we have to keep supporting one another. You know, even the president, he can't do it all by himself. You see what I'm saying? Just just like a single mother cannot do it all by herself. You know, we have to keep supporting one another and uplifting one another with that that agape love, that love that that keeps us alive. So I'm not going to speak too much more. I just wanted to say, you know, if we can come together and get, you know, you know, the numbers together from, from our people uh, uh, with the movement to move with this Congress and help change Congress, then we can get somewhere. That's right. But we have to stop putting the fingers and start putting action through the footwork. Like Brother Noble Mir says, use your hands. Get put your hands in it. <laughs> Don't be afraid to dig in that ground and, 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 and plant a pushing seed. In God's good ground. Much love, family. Peace and blessings. Plenty of much love, sister. Uh, to God be the glory. Uh, I, I really appreciate your acknowledgement, sister. And, and I've always said out there uh, that, you know, the sisters, we work hand in hand with them, sisters. But the sisters, you know, who grow and develop into being mothers of the movement, you know, we call them mom, M-O-M. That's mothers of the movement. That's a high title, you know. Uh, we have an obligation. We have an obligation to always respect their sacrifices. And when we when we can understand and when we can appreciate uh, the nature, the pure nature of our sister, and then the pure nature of the brother working hand in hand, then the solution is right around the corner. Uh, we used to establish several different and 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 I'm going. I, I want to touch on very very quickly uh, the method, the methodology of movement and action. Uh, and the sister raised a very good point. She's talking about self sacrifice, and then she touched on the resolution, uh, how to resolve problems. One of the most effective and efficient solutions that we really, really, really have to get to the grassroots of our community is the art and the science of conflict resolution. And that's how to resolve conflicts before they blow up out of proportion. And in order to do that, you have to teach what we call root cause analysis. Nip it in the bud. Get to the root of the situation. To have young men and and young women before it escalates out of their control and then out of our control in order to stop the senseless shootings and the violence, we have to teach the art and the science of conflict resolution. And the only way to do that is to teach them how to identify conflict if they're going to have conflict resolution. Because them young brothers and sisters, they don't even know they're in conflict until somebody going in their trunk and coming back with something that's going to take them out of this world, you know? Yeah. Uh, uh, or if they think that it's resolved, they standing there on the block five days later, and all of a sudden a van or a car or a truck comes up and takes another child away from us, you yeah. know? The, the science and the art of conflict resolution, that's a viable solution. Now, at the 30,000-foot level, we as elders and seniors of the movement, we are compelled and have a moral responsibility and a fiduciary responsibility if you're a nonprofit organization to drive these solutions upstream until they reach the ears of our elected officials. In the old days until now, you don't have to be a political party. And I think that you have a lot of those uh, members in the House of Representatives, in the Congress, and all the chaos that they locked in now with this gridlock and this so-called shutdown, 
you know, they're looking for conflict resolution in themselves. So we are the best example. And if we can bring the solution to our conflict resolution and the science, the solution of conflict resolution and the application or the methodology of that, then they take an ear because they're looking for anything that's going to clear up the, the atmosphere of chaos and confusion in their realm. So we didn't necessarily have, always have solid political parties. What we did was we always organized different branches of what we call PACs or PACs. That's political action committees, you see. So we can be one movement with one focus, one people, one destiny, one aim, one destiny, as the Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey say. But let us gather ourselves and assemble ourselves in so many different streams of political action committees that they ain't got no choice but to listen to you. I'm knocking. And if you don't answer, we're going to do a kick no anyway. You know what I'm saying? Because we got so many political action committees coming at you, but we all saying the same thing. That's right. It ain't just giving a little wink and a nod to to, to certain so-called movements with the solution because I got you tied up with my special interest money. You endorsing me, I'm endorsing you. You got uh, a lobbyist at my office, and then, you know, hey, uh, according to my agenda and my platform, I'm going to depend on you to push that vote, uh, and we'll wash each other's back. This ain't that kind of party. Matter of fact, it ain't no goddamn party. It's a political action committee. So... That's how we move on these people. If we can mobilize phone banks, we know that the, the ultimate solution from the grassroots to the 30,000 foot, we want to be backed up with the voices of the Honorable Larry Hoover, televised, and the Honorable Jeff Ford. We want a congressional delegation. If we can fill up them, them food banks, I mean, not the food banks, but it is food, but if we can fill up the, the, the phone banks and put that food in their ear, this brings conflict resolution to their chaos and to our chaos. It's a win-win situation because they ride on favorability polls. And if uh, in, in any kind of corporate science or any kind of political science, you have statisticians standing behind measuring everything. And I want to leave this on y'all mind. Whatever does not get measured does not get managed. Remember that. We need measurables, deliverables, and metrics. What are your impacts? Ask yourself that from a very, very worm's eye, a very low worm's eye viewpoint. What are your measurables? What are your metrics? What are your impacts on your family structure? Then ask yourself that on the community level. Then on the national level. But don't think you're getting ready to go get a congressional delegation if you ain't got your own house in order and you can't produce measurable or deliverable or some type of value-added service that you provide in your own community. Ain't nobody going to listen to you. Yeah. So when you arrive at your congressman or at your alderman or at your city councilman, have some measurables. Show the impact. How are you being efficient? How are you being effective? That's two different words, but it brings the highest value to any political action committee or the receiver, which is your honorable congressman or your alderman, your city council. Okay? I mean, uh, uh, is everybody following me or? Yes, brother. Yes. I really give honor to the sister on the phone because... She pointed out that, remember, service is sacrifice, but she manifested the resolution problems. You know, how are we going to resolve the problem? That's that conflict resolution. But when you do conflict resolution, when you teach conflict resolution, on the other side of that, you have deliverables and measurables. How did you impact? What was the outcome? Did you survey the people that you talked that to? What was their testimonial? Yeah. In the combined Facebook pages, we are reaching over 750,000 precious souls out there, and we are affecting change, and we can come with proof, documented proof. 
through all yeah. the testimonials. See, we can even gauge it and get it down to demographics. What is your age groups that you're impacting? What is the gender? What is the percentage of those? What is the spread, the demographic spread? We have to be professional, and that's why we have to drive education. It don't take no high collegiate, scholastic, wannabe professor or a nutty professor. <laughs> it don't take you to be burdened with a bunch of paperwork and with a bunch of letters behind your name if you ain't doing nothing out here and you can't affect change. These babies in the streets, they will not listen to who they don't know, yeah. and they will not trust who they don't know. In order for them to listen, they're going to have to trust. But yeah. they not trust who they don't know. you got to get out here on this grind and come up out of our little yeah. collegiate laboratories and get down and give the message to them and make it plain. First of all, bro, I want to show you how to keep yourself up out of the situation that a brother will yeah. go up in the trunk and come back at you. I want to teach you how to disarm this brother before he even reach for it. You see what I'm saying? Disarm him in his mind and in his heart. When you can start doing that, then you gauge him. You get the feedback. And that feedback becomes your metrics, your impact. You put that on yeah. paper and you start showing these politicians, you're going to have to rally around our solution or we're going to vote your ass up out of office, period. Right. That's right. Amen, amen, amen. And a thousand parts of my beloved brother, peace and blessings, but that is exactly the reason why we were having this show Tonight, a continuation to follow up with the Black Caucus movement with our Honorable Wallace Gator Bradley, our president of United Peace Incorporated, and um, right. this is why we're having this show, so we can make sure that the brothers understand which avenues to go in. Um, get to get to your political people in your world and um, in your area and reach out to the congressmen and women and start writing them letters. Brother is, is, is all it is is a clean cut pattern. All we doing is cookie cutting. You know the pattern is out there. You know the template is out there. So when you see my father moving in the way, uh, the Honorable Gator Bradley, uh, the President yeah. of the United States, when you see my dad moving in a certain way, he does. I might talk to him every day in certain cycles of the soul, and then in other seasons of the soul, I might be able to talk to him about once a week or once a month. But we're moving like that because we hold the template. And y'all got the template. That yeah. It's been there. You know what I'm saying? It's been there. But let's come at them with so many different flavors of the same ice cream that they say yeah. it's undeniable. It's undeniable. Yes, sir. So it's all in the name. And, and, and sometimes we call it, in the professional world, in corporate America, we call it scope creep when we're doing certain projects. Sometimes it's easy to allow yourself to descend into scope creep, and that's that's a uh, scope creep is when you're losing focus, you know, or either your focus widens so much that your effective solution it ceases to become effective, and it, it ceases to become efficient. Efficiency is how are you going to save money and time? Effectiveness, what is the what is the impact? What is the power? The strength? I mean, the results. Can you come in, put your thing down, and say, peace be still, and, and all of a sudden, it's a deafening silence in heaven. That's effectiveness. When everybody else shut the hell up because you, they know you got the solution. See, you got a bunch of bystanders and a bunch of pom-pom shakers that believe in that, that, that demonic concept. They sing that demonic hymnal as they march into their demonic ritual, day in and day out. They collect the money, pass the tray, praise God, pass the tray some more, and all of a sudden I come up with a Lexus or a Beamer. So that demonic verse that they say, they ask themselves in secrecy, why cure it for a dollar when we can treat it for a thousand? That's what we up against. 
when you get to the congressional levels and when you get to the political levels, because you have so much special interest money tied into these so-called grassroots communities that ain't doing nothing but raping the people. And they pacifying the situation. They treating the problem instead of curing the problem because the treatment, the perpetual treatment of the problem is a lucrative venture to them. That's a business to them. This ain't no damn business with us. It ain't no business with with the the holy and divine, honorable, honor society of growth and development. And it show ain't no business with United in Peace, the Pops Movement, or any other blended political action committees or moral movements, branch movements that we have. It's a God way of life. Glory. To God be the glory. Mm-hmm. It's a way of life, and that's that Amen. sacrifice. That's that. That's that patience. That's that sacrifice, man. So. All praise is due to God. The template is there. But you have to learn how to measure your success. How are you being successful in the missionary purpose or the mission statement that you are trying to deliver to your people? Your people are your customers. Okay? What value what value are you bringing to your customers? The customers are the children that are dying every day because of this, this senseless violence and this shooting. How are you going to affect change? The only way we can affect change is to bring value. What kind of value are you going to bring now? The first question, how can I be effective? How can I be efficient? How can I capture a history of, of deliverables? What have you done? And then lay that out on a number scale. How many lives were impacted? And then how many slipped through your grasp? Then you start driving that back upstream to your, your, your congressional level. Okay, so for right now, that televised delegation, we want them phone banks filled with concerned citizens. We need to hear the voice of those grassroots leaders, in particular, the Honorable Larry Hoover. He has the power to affect change in his voice and his concern because the truth about the Honorable Larry Hoover is not being broadcast. And because of the misconception to what he's dedicated to, to peace and the unification of all minorities, urban America and even rural America, the concept of growth and development goes beyond, above and beyond the African-American community and the urban community, but it cures the patient that needs the medicine the most, first and foremost. And that's us. It came from us. We have to heal ourselves first. They cried out to, to Master Jesus when they hung him on the wall, on the, on the cross. And they, and they blasphemed. They mocked him. They mocked us on the cross. They said, bring yourself down from the cross. Heal yourself. Yeah. Huh? We didn't forget that. Put the vinegar in our mouth to make us speak ill towards each other. Yeah. Hmm? Huh? Bound your hands on the cross so you couldn't perform the miraculous acts of uplifting your little brothers and sisters. You couldn't do anything with your hands, not just create businesses, not just create something that's materialistic, but they didn't even want you putting your hands, reaching and touching the hearts and souls of your own people. That's crucifixion in its highest form. Bound your feet down. Put nails in your feet so you couldn't even travel the land. But today, the resurrection is a fact. I can reach out and touch you if you're in political office. And, yeah, I mean, hey, you know, bring me anybody from Anchorage, Alaska, and I have an urban translator go see them. You see what I'm saying? And that comes from honest dedication. We ain't getting paid. We ain't getting paid a goddamn dime. You know, I... Talking about sacrifice, and we're talking about service. You know, I don't mind using myself as a, a self sacrificial banner of experience. And it's a humble banner that I, I, I submit because it ain't for us, it's for the young and the unborn. So I'm 10 seconds away from uh, eviction. You know, I'm doing all I can to hold on to my own household. 
ain't seen a damn dime from the movement, don't want a dime from the movement. That's on me as an individual man to support my family. Indeed. But with, with time comes commitment, and with commitment comes a lot of time. And sometimes time can funnel you into this, this, this sacrifice and this service to the extent where you jeopardize your own family. And, and then you have to start drawing checks and balance because everything needs balance and harmony. You see? Yeah. But sometimes your heart is in it so much you lose focus of, of your own precious foundation and you give your all until you ain't got nothing left at all. Yeah. You see? So that's 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 love. And, and it all hangs on that principle of love. And that's why love is at the apex of both stars. How much do you love yourself, your children, the young and the unborn, the future generations, and what are you willing to serve and sacrifice? Peace and blessings. Who are you, my brother? Uh, State your, your name and where you're from. Tookie Williams, Jr. out of Southside, Chicago, uh, touring uh, Saginaw, Michigan. Uh, Peace and blessings, brother Tookie Williams. How you doing? Man, trying to hold together, you know, uh, at this mid-age, you know, you know, feeling the sting from all the generations that we passed through to get where we are today as middle-aged gentlemen, you know. Uh, I sacrificed it a lot. I, I don't know. I like to say I did a thing, you know, uh, take That's God right. to care of the world. So, um, but me and God together, I can say, uh, let's say he had me perform uh, and, 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 and do crafts and stuff to save the children from the sense of violence, you know, since 2001. You know, um, even though I knew and grew up in an era where I know I ain't seen nothing but red tape from the hospitals to police stations to schools and neighborhoods, you know. But somehow in my little bubble world, in my mind, I feel like I can save somebody or help somebody in jeopardy such as myself in dangerous hostage or any type of situation, even though I know I'm not a 120 proof with it. Um, I know... Uh, we can try. And, you know, I looked at the markets itself. I've seen, you know, growing up seeing a lot of Africans and black people and Jamaicans selling their things on the sidewalk. You know, I always ask my mom, why they don't have a mall or a roof over their head? And they say, well, they, you know, they, they they will one day, you know, when they sell enough items, you know, that maybe the people will give them their own spot. Well, you know, to me, those days really never came, you know, even down to the the clean Muslims selling newspapers and bean pies. You see Farrakhan taking money from, you know, a lot of people and, and putting them in the neighborhood and they're only, self, you know, help himself, you know, be honest with me. You know, those gentlemen still standing on the street when we see newspaper stands to cover their heads as closed down from mom and pop Sun Times newspapers and stuff. You know, they them Stands was open for so we can walk up and have a cup of coffee and maybe buy a slice of bean pie, not to have it in the rain. You know, we always been taken advantage of in this feral, city, uh, feralized uh, nation of way of thinking. You know, I don't care how many thinkers we get. You know, such as uh, I love Jesse Jackson and uh, and and you know what he stands for and everything. But you know, it, it, when they get up there. They start acting like they're pharaohs and just putting people to a point of they they sacrifice too much. You you feel like your your you vampires and such you dry, you know you know you know it takes its toll. Any abuse on any human body or animal body it takes its toll, and the black people, I mean from complaint to complaint to what's really what we think. You know, it has taken a toll on the masses, and the numbers is outlandish, you know. And you hear these cries, but, you know, but the one thing you, I hear, you know, mostly in a deaf mouth, you know, they all have the same cries. I wasted too much time, you know, and we allow time to steal all the, the, the abilities and the time to, to, to get together and love one another to make things happen. And, and the hardships that we go through, such as yourself today, you know, <laughs> We can't get any help because everybody's got this several <clears throat> thinking. You have to build basically a pyramid to get help from them. 
and you, you and it's 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 not logical. You know, it's just it's hard right now for a lot of black people. It's gonna always be that way. And when we realize that and stop thinking that we're bigger than life when we have just a little bit, you know, I'm talking, you know, overly thinking your finances, you know, and, and, and you know, and your means of life. But that's putting your families in jeopardy. You know, you mm-hmm. got to think mm-hmm. that's, that we have a moral standard. We have to create one. If you don't have one, stop. Right. Sit back and think of your morals. What? I don't drink coffee. I like tea. Think stick with that. You know, we got to do something to, to to start that trend amongst ourselves. That gentleman era has passed, you know. But if you look at the 60s and 50s, just the way the men carried themselves, even if they was little boys like Emmett Till, they had a gentleman about themselves. That's a moral man in their eyes. They can take a picture and you see moral pouring out of their eyes. Nowadays, you got no morals in your eyes when you take a picture. So that, oh, that tells me there. Yeah, that your lesson, your levels has changed. Peace and blessings. I'm gonna pass the mic on. Uh, peace and blessings. I want to. Uh, I want to revisit that um, what Brother Tricky Williams said. <clears throat> when it comes to the politicians, even though we vote them in office, once we get this demographics down packed of who we are and understand what we are unified, we would let them know. We put you in here. We can bring and we can bring you back out here. You know what I'm saying? And if your political, what you strive and do politically is not what you say you're going to do, you would never, ever be held accountable in that office again. Once we unify each other, starting with our household, unifying our homes, and, and bring back that moral fiber and what it is to stand upon the mother and the child and, and, and being a part of the family unification, we hold, them, we hold the people that we place into these offices Accountable, so they go see what happened to the last person who came in here and did us this way. They go see who happened to the person all the way over across a different state. Once we get ourselves in order and get ourselves together, you know what I'm saying? It, it, it's not about who's in office and how they are in office and this, that, and the third right now because we ain't got our homes straight yet. You know what I'm saying? They they're looking at us talking about. But we look at them like, Hi, what you going to do about the violence and this, that, and the third? They're looking back at us. Y'all are the one causing the violence. There's more black-on-black black crime going on than anything in the world. Y'all want to push the issues of our police, uh, uh, justifiable homicides and this, that, and the third, but it's more blacks killing blacks or Latino b- blacks killing browns than anything. Once we get unified and have these people out here that make these brothers understand, hey, this is what it is. Stop the violence. Stop the killing. This is where my words come from. But these, uh, the, the original tribes that we are unified here, united, united in peace, and all the grassroots organizations, you know what I'm saying, we have to get our house in order so then they can be held accountable for their actions when they're sitting in them seats. I yield the mic. Peace and blessings. Um. This brother Tim again. Hello. Peace and blessings, Tim. Peace and blessings. Oh, oh yeah. I just like to say, you know, dealing with down to the like the street level guys, you know, brother still in the hood or whatever. I believe, you know, brothers gotta um, learn where cool is. See, just growing up and following what you see, you don't know if it's cool or not. You know, you just gonna grow up and do that, and at this point blank period, anybody would do it. You know, um, a child would do it. I once saw a video where a girl was twerking and her child walked in front of the camera. This child was like three years old, and she started imitating her mother. You know, it was what the baby had saw, and the baby thought it was cool because the baby was ignorant of the fact of what was going on. And, you know, a lot of Mm. people want to be somebody, you know what I'm saying? They want to be somebody instead of starting to be somebody, you know. First, they have to learn what somebody is. Because somebody, because someone can be anybody, but anybody can't be someone. Unless you go. We show ourselves approved. You know, in the Bible it says faith without works is dead. You know, people want to be somebody when they are already someone. Brothers must learn what they share is. You know, people say that 
I'm not getting enough done because they feel like, well, I'm just in the hood and I'm not on a, you know, a national scale. But scripture said that the Bible would testify against you on judgment day. So if you can come home after work or after, you know, whatever you've done to uplift the movement and lay in your bed or soak in your tub or, you know, sit on your couch and your feet hurt and you can barely keep your eyes open mm-hmm. and your hands hurt and got blisters and calluses on it because you've been mm-hmm. writing all day, you know, that is the day that your body just testified against you when you needed a judgment. You know, that's that guy upstairs that everybody is searching from right there inside of you testifying. Mm-hmm. Look, you, you know, is listening to your body testifying. You know, we have to be in tune with ourselves. You know, I, I, I've, I'm only 25, and um, mm-hmm. I helped the guy get a GED. You know, Praise I helped the guy, God. I helped one guy mm-hmm. learn how to get a um, pass from it to get the advanced mail to, um, and learn his grammar in order for him to pass basic education. So now he's in a preparation for GED class. I have influenced at least three brothers to get back in school and get their GEDs. And I have helped a few guys change their views on what God is and their purpose in the movement because, you know, I help them learn and see for themselves what cool was because I'm about that. You know, I'm about everything, you know, that a dude that's tough think he about, but it ain't about that. And so I know that. And when you know that, you know, you can open your eyes. I just believe, you know, a lot of guys got to get more in tune with themselves and recognize, you know, that, you know, you are someone and your little bit counts because if we soldiers in the field and I'm a sniper, I may be one sniper, but I have to look out for 10 people. Even though my role, I may take on out only one guy. You know, my small role helps 10 people secure a building, you know, where we need to get some hostages out. So I think people need to be more honorable to the fact that they're doing something and it counts for something to the person that they're supposed to count for instead of trying to get some glory or some fame for it. And um, you know, I yield the mic. That's right. That's right. right now we're going to pass the um, peace and message. We're going to pass the um, mic around real time um, for one one time only. We have uh, two minutes left of the show. And, uh, Beloved, anybody uh, before, to be, before y'all do that, uh, is there any way that I can just bid, you know, my peace, my love, and my farewells to you all? I have to hop right quick. I, I've, I've got some obligations on on the uh, the admin level. We're trying to set up some new sites and to roll out some new programs for the children over here. Uh, and, of course, we, we just – yes, sir. We we just suffered a loss, and I'm going to ask everybody on, on the line to keep us in your prayers. Uh, you know, we have a, a very, very dedicated uh, elder who has been in service for many, many years, and that brother's name is Hal Baskin. Uh, if you don't know about him, Google his name, uh, Hal, and I'll drop an article out there for you all to read. He just uh, he he suffered. Uh, his son uh, was just one of the victims that was shot, and from what we understand, his son is uh, uh, being stabilized. I'm not aware of his current condition, but the last time that I heard, he is being stabilized. We haven't lost him, uh, but it was a critical shooting, uh, and he was uh, caught up in one of the eight that was shot on the south and the west sides of Chicago uh, over the weekend. Uh, so his name is Hal Baskin. That's uh, H A L B A S K I N. His name was Senior, and his son was the Junior. Uh, they got uh, they got shot, and he was only 25. So that really touches me yeah. when I hear your works, uh, dear brother, uh, that announced your age at 25. You know, two and five make seven, and that's the number of God. So that's you know we move in cycles of quarters. You know, first quarter, second quarter, fourth quarter. You know, so that's your first quarter. Uh, and that's a divine quarter. You've reached your first cycle of maturity, you know, at 25. Uh, and, and to have this brother, the son of a great leader, Hal Baskin, being shot, but once again a victim of senseless shootings and killings. You know, this uh, it's, it's, it's his son today. You know, it could be my son tomorrow. Let's think about that. Your son tomorrow. You know, and so many other sons and daughters yesterday. His son today, 
so many others yesterday, and maybe ours in the morning. We have to work together at this. And, and I love the brother for saying we need to do all we can personally at the very low grassroots level. We ain't concerned about being the next uh, 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 mega microphone that's touching, you know, uh, this, this, this moving the masses. We ain't concerned with that. When you move your heart and move your children, when you can move your household and bring peace and love around you, walk out down the street and get a lot of love and respect because they know you live it every day. That's truly moving the world. And so with with that, I, I want to give my peace and everlasting love to everybody, and uh, I want to bid you peace. Uh, I'm always here, 24 hours or 25 hours, eight days a week. You know, I, I, I sleep with my phone. Feel free to call me anytime. You know, I, I've got an open door policy. And never feel that that you are, are are not worthy enough to engage me. I'm not worthy enough to even get down there and wash your feet. But I'm gonna wash your feet anyway. You know, we we are gonna move together with unity as humble servants and keep God up front because it all yes, came sir. from the heart of God. You know, and it, it has to return. So with that, dear brothers, if I can leave, you know, the family that prays together stays together. If I can offer a humble a humble prayer, just about 30 seconds of prayer, I'm going to depart. I want to uh, uh, just recite, you know, uh, one of my paths in life has always been uh, the Islamic path. Uh, so I'm going to recite the Al-Fatiha for everybody, and that's the opening or the beginning chapter of the Holy Quran, and I'll translate that for you. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد 